What's going on guys? So I built this custom puzzle for my wife for Mother's Day. Um, I cut it out on my X-Tool D1 Pro laser. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did it. Now, I'm still new to the laser and laser cutting in general, so I made a few mistakes along the way, but maybe they'll be helpful for you to kind of learn from my mistakes. So the first step is to find a puzzle generator. So I found this online. I'll link to this in the description below. Uh, it's just like a free website. You can do either a rectangular or hexagonal circle puzzle and I thought it would be cool to do a circular puzzle where my wife is in the middle and then me my kids and our pets are all around her so luckily uh, if I set the rings to two it was exactly six um, which was the perfect number that I needed so if you need less than six I'm not sure uh, this probably won't work out for you, or maybe you can do something with a rectangular puzzle. And then I just did circle wrap and truncate edge pieces to create the circular. So you can play around with these settings here to kind of customize it. It's like fully dynamic. Um, and when you're all done, you just click download SVG and you can either open up Illustrator or Inkscape and work in there. Or really, this is simple enough where you could just kind of go right into um, Creative Space, which is Xtools um, cutting software. So I actually used Illustrator to design the project uh, just because that's kind of what I'm comfortable with. And so I saved this as an SVG and if you are doing Illustrator, you just gotta make sure when you do the save, when you go to export, export as, you need to make sure that you convert the fonts to outlines, otherwise sometimes it can show up weird in Lightburn. So I used a Lightburn for this since I already have the colors. So it's great to color code your uh, designs. So the black in this case is for engraving and the red is for cutting. And so when you go into Lightburn, all the colors will automatically separate on their own layers. So you can assign, uh, you know, fill for the engrave and cut for, you know, the red the red line. So the black is engrave and the red is for cutting. All right, so let's go down to the laser and cut this out. All right, so we're down in the basement. So I've got this scrap piece of wood in here. I've got my D1 Pro up on risers because I was using the rotary. So I just grabbed a four by four and screwed this piece in here to get it to the right height. That way it doesn't move when uh, it starts cutting everything out. Now I'm hoping I can fit this in here. I did resize the puzzle down to 100 millimeters, which seems like we should be able to fit that in here. So I'm gonna place this uh, right at the corner here. So you'll notice, so you notice I have the cross hairs at kind of like this bottom left corner. So I just wanna make sure in light burn, I have that selected as my origin and then we'll click frame. And so it's running off the edge of the board. So it looks like I need to, looks like I need to kind of cheat it in here into the kind of cut section. But one thing that's cool about light burn is it also has this rubber band frame mode, which in this case, uh, you know, the icon's a circle. This is a circle design, so it's basically just gonna make a circle, but it, it'll basically just trace the outline of your design, which is definitely more handy in this case when I'm trying to frame, you know, an exact shape. So we can see now, looks like we just make it. I'm gonna just cheat this over a little bit more. All right, so I can see it bypasses everything. I think this is gonna work. So, so this is three millimeter basswood plywood. So for the engraving, I'm doing 60 mil millimeters per second speed, 100% power. And then for the cut is seven millimeters per second at 100% power. And those are based off of the recommendations. Wait a minute, engrave should be 60% power. I think I have this backwards. So we should be good to go there. So let's just check the preview. Uh, it's another feature I really like about Lightburn. You can visualize exactly uh, what the laser is going to do. So this is the engraving, and then it transitions to the cutting. And it does the perimeter last, which is great, so it'll prevent things from falling out. Ooh, we've got that one last thing there. That's weird. Let me try these this different setting here and see if it changes anything. There's the etching, there's the cutting. No, it's still doing the same thing. All right, that seems to be 
doing it better. So it's doing all the internal cuts and then it does the final external cut like that. So um, I just went into the optimization settings and enabled cut in directional direction order. That seemed to do uh, the best cut sequence in my opinion. All right, so let's get the fan on and the air assist and let's hit start. All right. So I had to stop it. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, the engraving is definitely not powerful enough or it's going too fast. So I'm gonna have to see what's wrong here. Guys, I realized the problem. I got my kickstand down. I started setting the height of the laser and then forgot. So the laser is way too high for the material. Well, that explains it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna reset the height of the laser and, or I should say I'm gonna actually set the height of the laser this time and we'll just run it again. And hopefully, I don't know. I wonder if I should flip, should flip the, la flip the uh, plywood. Let me flip the plywood so we get a nice clean surface. All right, let's actually set the height of the laser this time. All right. So the laser height is set, kickstand is up. I need to shim this up or something. Yeah, I can definitely see how having a honeycomb is nice. Definitely on my list. All right, let's try this again. Kickstand is down, bring my laser down, tighten it, kickstand up, and we're level, interfering with anything, although we're getting a little close right there, but I think we'll be okay. So I'm gonna bring the laser back over here. We're gonna have to reframe it. All right, so let's frame it. Actually, I need to change the origin because now it's gonna go over there. So instead of the origin being down here, we wanna change it up here because I flipped the plywood. All right, so I just wanna make sure it's not gonna hit those screws. All right, let's frame it again. Let's go into the top corner. I think we, I think we're good. We're so close, we're so close. I don't wanna screw this thing up by cutting through a waste area. I think we're good now, so let's go ahead and start it. All right, let's turn on the fan and the air assist. Looking a little better, hopefully. We'll see. All right, we just finished up. The cuts look great, but the font, I think, kind of screwed me up. I think the, uh, the width of the lines that I was trying to engrave were so small that it just kind of confused the G code. Like this one came out, the mom and the hearts came out pretty good, but these ones, they were scaled a little bit smaller and didn't come out that great. I think all the pieces are fully cut. So that's awesome. Now, overall, I would say the pieces fit together really nicely. Um, there's definitely a little bit of slop just from the thickness of, you know, the laser um, cutting, cutting away the wood, burning away the wood. But um, overall, it's great. You know, for what it is, it's it's an awesome gift. I think what I'll end up doing is tracing over the letters with a marker and then maybe having my kids kind of decorate each individual puzzle piece. All right, guys, hopefully you found that helpful. And again, I'll have links to everything in the description below if you want to check that out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.